فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're in the topic الغلو في الدين Extremism in the religion I mentioned that inshallah ta'ala this topic I'm going to tackle it and I'm going to be speaking about it from five chapters of five headings and we spoke about the first one which was تعريف الغلو لغة وشرعة What is extremism in its lexical and its technical definition and the second we spoke about حقيقة الغلو the reality of extremism and I mentioned there that the غلو is الإفراد على التفريط it is to be it is to have exaggeration of something and to go overboard up beyond the uh, the proper limits and I also mentioned that it, it is also to be negligent it is to be below the required limits from each and every one of us and I also mentioned in the haqiqatul ghulu in the reality of extremism I also mentioned the types of ghulu there is one is known as al ghulu al i'tiqadi al kulli it is a comprehensive belief related extremism and the second one is al ghulu al amali al juz'i it is extremism related to deeds and actions and then we swiftly moved on to the root causes asbabul ghulu what are the root causes that bring about extremism whether it be extreme in exa- exaggeration or extreme in what? in negligence and I mentioned previously three three root causes and inshallah ta'ala today we're going to go into the fourth root cause that brings about extremism and that is اطلاق آيات نزلت في الكفار على المؤمنين المخلصين It is to place verses that have come down on the disbelievers to take those verses and to place it on the dis uh, onto onto the believers. So it's to take verses from the Quran that Allah is talking to the disbelievers, Allah is addressing the disbelievers. This verse is for the disbelievers, and that verse is taken and it is placed on the believers. And I also I I mentioned this before, I touched on it. I mentioned the statement of who Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala. Anhuma, may Allah be pleased with him and his and his father, that he said, "Innahu muntalaqu ila ayatin unzilat fil kufari," that the Haruriya, the Khawarij, they took verses that came down on the disbelievers. فَجَعَلُوهَا عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and they placed them. They placed them on the believers. This is narrated by Bukhari in his Sahih Mu'allaqan. Without a without a connected chain for it. <coughs> so what we take from this is that the verses that have come down on the disbelievers, and I've mentioned this before, you are not allowed to in any way, form or shape to take those verses and place it on a believer and give him the ruling that comes with it. As for if you use the verse that has come down on the disbelievers, you use it for a believer, but you don't make him uh, the same ruling as the disbelievers this is something we find that the messenger did alayhi salatu was salam in the hadith is sunan al-tirmidhi on the authority of who abi waqid al-layfi the famous hadith that the companions came to the messenger alayhi salatu was salam and they said to him ij'al lana that anwat make us a tree in which we can put our weapons on and the messenger alayhi salatu was salam kama lahum that anwat they said make us a tree which we can put our weapons on just like the disbelievers have a tree in which they put their what? Weapon on. And this is, is tabarruk. They want to get baraka from the tree. They, they believe that the tree somehow is going to give their weapons strength and power 
that when they fight with their enemies, that they're going to win. That's what the disbelievers believed. So when the companions said that, the messenger, what did he say? The messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he raised his voice. He said, Allahu Akbar, innakum qultum qawla Bani Israel. You guys have uttered the words of Bani Israel, the Jews. What is it that you said? You said, ij'al lana ilahan kama lahum aliha. You said, make us an ilah, just like these people have an ilah. Now what you need to understand is, the narration actually mentions that these people were what? Hudatha ahd bil Islam. They were new to Islam. Ma'adalika, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he raised his voice. This matter became serious to him alayhi salatu wasalam. It wasn't a light matter to him alayhi salatu wasalam. And he said to them that you guys have said this. Some people would come and say that you're exaggerating. Well, they said they just want a tree that they can put their weapons on. But the Messenger Sallallahu was trying to show them the seriousness of this statement that you have just used. And how it is in correlation and it is in line of the statements that the Jews said to Nabiullah Musa, Ij'al lana ilahan kama lahum aliha. Also the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he said to him, wake up for Qiyamul Layl. And Ali responded by saying, Arwahuna, our souls are in the hands of Allah. Arwahuna biyadillah. Our souls are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Messenger looked at him and he said, and the Prophet turned around and while whilst leaving he said, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ jadala." That verily mankind is the most argumentative. The, you, and we know this ayah as we said yesterday, it came down on who? Another ibn al-Harith. Another ibn al-Harith was a disbeliever and he was very argumentative. He would argue every point when it was brought to him. Some people are just like that. They don't like to take the truth. What they like to do is to argue everything. And they think that is wisdom and they... Tr- Think that is, that is uh, a sign of being uh, an academic, uh, a smart individual. But the truth of the matter is, this is what? It is jahl. But what we take from these two is that taking a verse that came, out and came down on disbelievers, if you use it for, the, for a believer to show the, that they have something in common and that they need to be very serious, فَلَا ضَرَرَ Alayhi, there's no harm in this particular matter as we do find the messenger doing it alayhi salatu wasalam. As for taking those verses that came on, down on the disbelievers and placing it on the believers and giving the believer the ruling of the disbeliever and then spilling his blood. This, my beloved brothers and sisters, is what? That which a person comes with and it becomes extremism, an exaggeration. al ghulu it is extremism in exaggerating, going, going overboard, going above the proper limit. The next cause, the next root cause for al uh, is Akhdu taking Zawahirun Nusus, taking the apparent textual evidences, whether it be the Quran or whether it be the Sunnah. Duna Mura'ati Ijma'i Salaf, without observing. Without giving any consideration to the consent that is already intact, the consent that's already set by the pious predecessors. So what the person does is that he finds an ayah in the Quran, he finds a hadith, and what he does is that he jumps, he jumps on this verse, and he takes it, and he says, This is my evidence. Or he takes a hadith and he says, This is my evidence. When in reality, the matter has a consent, there's already a consent in place. And we know the seriousness of those who go against consent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا Allah says, وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ The word, يُشَاقِق it means the person who tries to make himself equal to the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. In other words, he thinks that he is independently able to do his own, set his own path. 
So that's why he's making himself, he's siding himself with the Messenger Ali, like he's equivalent to the Messenger. Just like the Messenger Ali والسلام, would set rules and regulations in place, he thinks he can also do the same. Or he, or he thinks that he can make, set himself apart. وَمَن يُشَاقِقَ الرَّسُولَ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى After, like in clear-cut evidence comes to you. You are informed. You are informed of what? That this matter, there is already a ruling in place. Are you with me? The person who then tries to go on another path, he tries to set himself another road after it is crystal clear that there's already a legislation in place. مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى After clear guidance comes to him. And not only that, so he's actually going against the textual evidence. He's going against the messenger and he's also going against who? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Is that all Allah stopped the verse at? No. Allah informs us there's a third thing that they are going against, which is وَيَتَّبِعْ And they are following غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Other than the path of the, the believers. They are going against the path of who? The path, path of the believers. Allah tells us in this verse that it's three things that they are going against then. They are going against Allah and His Messenger, which is two. And they are also going against وَيَتَّبِعْ And they go against غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ now, if you look at the verse and you proper analyze it and you, you take the verse in, what you find here is that Allah mentions going against who? Going against Allah wa ta'ala and going against the Messenger Ali salatu wasalam, and also going against the path of the, the, the path of the believers. Allah uses a letter here which is وَيَتَّبِعْ The wow here, وَيَتَّبِعْ and also follows the path or, or he follows a path other than the path of the believers. This wow, according to the usuliyin, the scholars who deal with the science of usul al-fiqh, they, they call it the wow of al-iqtiran. It's called atful iqtiran. The atful iqtiran benefits us what? It benefits us that, pay attention, that taking a path other than the path of Allah and the path of the messenger, and the path of the believers, a path other than those three paths. Are you with me? They all have the same consequences. Each and every one of them, they share the same punishment. Are you with me? Based on what's going to come after, as Allah says, نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا Allah mentions, نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى Allah will forsake him and destroy him on the path which he has taken. And the day of judgment, Allah will make the hellfire his final abode. masira, And what an evil abode it will be for him. Now, the usuliyin mention here that it is taking the path other than the path of Allah and his messenger and also the path of the believers. That punishment is for anyone who takes other than those three paths. Are you with me, brothers? It's very important that you understand that. And this is like the hadith and this type of idalal, idalal, this type of atful iqtiran, this type of atful iqtiran is a hujjah, it is a proof bi ijma'il usuliyin. Yes, there is a type of atful iqtiran that the usuliyin differ within themselves if it's a proof. But this type, are you with me, brothers? Which, this type of atful iqtiran is what? It's a hujja bi ijma' al usulin. And I don't want to go into more details of what is this atful iqtiran. And it is like the hadith that we all know that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that there's going to come a people yastahilloon al hira wal harira wal ma'azif. There's going to come a people who are going to permit for themselves, make it halal for themselves, silk, zina, and also what? Music. This hadith, wow, is being used, shared by all. This wow has shown us that these all, all of these are prohibited. That they share one common thing, which is the punishment to come later. That they are all, so you can't say that this wow is not a proof for you to use it all together for one punishment.
because the atf al iqtiran la hujjat inda al usuliyin that is not a proof according to the scholars of usul so the, 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 it's only referring to for example some say that it's only referring to the uh, zina here or it's only referring to the silk for the men but as for the music no because you're trying to use the wow which is atf al iqtiran and it is not a proof are you with me brothers but what we say is la when things are mentioned together and then a punishment is mentioned after it. Of course, other, other conditions as well. It becomes a proof, especially like this verse. Especially like this verse. Now that was just a point, an aside point of understanding the verse. So we took from that verse that ijma, the consent, if you take a path opposite to the consent that was set or that it was in place, then you are on a path of deviation, a path of misguidance. Now, if you look at the ayah where Tabi Gaira Sabili al Mu'minina, follow a path other than the path of what? The believers. Who were the believers when this ayah came down? Was it us? It was the companions, first of all. So the Gaira Sabili al Mu'minin here is number one, the companions. It doesn't mean it's only them, but they are number one because they were the believers at that time when the verse came down. Okay? Also, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith, لا تجتمع أمتي على ضلالة That my ummah will not agree, that my ummah will not come together on that which is misguided. You will never find a consent that is, in, that is set, and then, and then we, we realize that this consent is actually misguidance. It's impossible that the ummah will never unite upon and they will never come on with what they will never come together on misguidance this hadith ibn majah at tabarani and other than them narrated it some scholars they weakened it because of a narrator in there by the name of abu khalaf al-a'ma whose real name is hazim ibn Ata, hazim ibn Ata. but the hadith has to be understood that and also many other reasons why they weakened it. But this hadith is hasanu bimujma'i turuqihi. This hadith, when all the narrations are brought together, it becomes sound. And it can be used as a proof. Because the narrations that have come are large in quantity. And no, many companions have narrated it uh, from the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. So the ummah don't unite upon consents. Sorry, the Ummah do not come with consent or they don't unite upon something and there is misguidance in it. Impossible. So if a person goes against consent, what does that mean? He has taken the misguided path and that the people's uniting is a what? Is a path of what? It's a path of... in. Well, that is when the Ummah come together and they unite upon something, we can say that this matter is infallible. It's errorless. There's no mistake in it. ولذلك حافظ ابن حجر العسقلاني رحمه الله in the chapter كتاب استتاب استتابة المرتدين he brought a powerful statement he says وفيه الزجر على الأخذ بظواهر جميع الآيات القابلة للتأويل التي يفضي القول بظواهرها إلى مخالفة إجماع السلف the great noble scholar ابن حجر العسقلاني says وفيه أن in this حديث is الزجر توان Al-Akhdi is to warn against taking the apparent verses, Jami' al-Ayat, all of the verses that are open to interpretation. The verses that are taking verses which are actually open for interpretation. Al-Lati yufdi al And that verse that you're taking, it will actually necessitate ila bukhalafati ijma'i salafi, opposing the path and the consents of the pious pre predecessors. Are you there? Well, my beloved brothers and sisters, the ijma' what it does is, the consents what it does is that if a verse has many meanings in it, many interpretations in it, there's many meanings in this verse that can be taken out of it. The consents of the salaf and the consents of the ummah, what it would do is that it would narrow it down to one particular meaning. 
and it will say that this is what it means. And it will set it, set it to that meaning. When a person then comes, he's got no choice except to follow that one meaning that the verse has. Whether you believe that it could also keep, carry this meaning and carry that meaning, right now we have a consensus that is in place and this consensus has narrowed it down to one of those meanings that it can have. So for you, coming with a verse and saying the apparent meaning of this verse is this for me. And that verse is open for many interpretations. And that interpretation has been narrowed down by a consensus. You have to follow that consensus. And that is why my beloved brothers and sisters, many people are taking ayat and hadith, but in reality, and they're trying to use it as a proof, but they've gone against ijma' consensus that's in place, and that is very dangerous. That is very dangerous. That is also another issue, which is many people, many people will claim ijma' in matters when there is no ijma'. They will come and they will say to you, Ya akhi, ajma' al-ummah. The ummah unanimously agreed upon something. I mean, they have, there's a consensus in this matter. ولذلك الإمام أحمد رحمه الله when he saw a man by the name Bishr al-Marisi who was a Jahmi refuted by the A'immah al-Sunnah they refuted him and they wrote books against him and Imam al-Shafi'i refuted him Ibn, Imam Ahmed رحمه الله refuted him and also Abu Uthman al-Darimi رحمه الله has a book called Naqd على Bishr al-Marisi this man used to claim ijma' in anything that he wanted to bring forward he'll say ah there's a consensus ah there's a consensus Oh, there's a consensus. So Imam Ahmed responded to him and he said to him, Anyone who claims a consensus like this, he's referring to Uthman al-Darimi, uh, sorry, uh, Bishr al-Marisi. Anyone who claims a consensus like this is a liar. Who has not, how, have, how do you not know that the people have differed in this matter? How do you not know? So it's upon the person who's claiming an ijma' to actually prove where he got this consensus from. And is there actually a consensus in this matter? So as you see, my beloved brothers and sisters, there's extreme both ways. There is what? Extreme both ways. Another group of people will say to you, I only take the ijma' of the sahabas. Then they would need to bring evidence forward that the consensus of the believers generally is not. Is not because the ayah clearly says, وَيَتَّبِعَ they follow and they follow other than the path of what? Other than the path of the, the other than the path of the believers. Are you with me, brothers? Other than the path of the believers. The ayah says believers and it's unrestrictedly. So it means the believers It means the believers until the day of until the day of judgment. But it's true. To, to affirm consent in this time right now, it's very hard to claim consent <coughs> due to how the world is today. Are you with me? Like at the time of the Sahabas and the Tabi'een and the Tabi'u Tabi'een, the land in which they resided on was limited. They would all either, the majority of them would be in Medina, a group of them would be here, in Kufa, and a group of them would be in Basra, a group of them would be in Dimashq, and it was, it was an, uh, some of them would be in Misr, Egypt, it was, a, it was countable. But right now, that's not the case. So when somebody claims an ijma', it requires what? A tathabbut wa tahqiq, that there really is a consensus in this matter. Well, in that, there are many books written on, on ijma'at, consensus, and what do you call it? Al-Imam Al-Mundiri rahimahullah has a kitab, kitab al-Ijma' Also Al-Imam Ibn Hazm has a kitab Baratib al-Ijma' And also that kitab Baratib al-Ijma' has a naqd of Ibn Taymiyyah of Ibn Hazm whether there is an Ijma' in this issue And one of the books I would recommend students of knowledge to actually have with them is a book called Mawsu'ah It's a encyclopedia Many professors have come together and in this particular book, it talks about many chapters of fiqh, ten and odd numbers, in which a student of knowledge can actually look into. Like for example, tahara is there, salah is there, jihad and etc. And you can look into it and it will tell you each matter, if ijma' was claimed, who claimed the ijma', 
if that ijma' was actually correct, it will give you a final natija, a final result, if truly that consensus actually exists. So it's something, mashallah, a student of knowledge will truly benefit from. So it's important, my beloved brothers and sisters, to observe ijma' al salaf, the pious predecessors, their consensus, and also the ijma' of the ummah, that you observe it, or else you will fall into extremism. Whether that extremism is, as we say, in exaggeration or in negligence. The next reason, the next root cause for extremism is Adam Fahmi Maqasid Sharia. Not having understanding of the objectives of Islamic laws. The person doesn't have any knowledge of Maqasid Sharia. This Sharia came for what? This religion and this religion, what did it come to? What did it come for? It came to what? It came to gain and reach particular goals. If a person doesn't understand that, then he will fall into extremism. If he doesn't know the objectives of Islamic laws, Al Ghulu will come from it. And that Ghulu can be exaggeration and that ghulu can also be negligence al ifrat wa tafrid shaykh al islam ibn taymiyah in his kitab iqtida sirat al mustaqim li mukhalafati ashab al jahim the second volume page 622 ibn taymiyah says the following he says fatafatta li haqiqati din وانظر ما اشتملت عليه الأفعال من المصالح الشرعية والمفاسد بحيث تعرف ما مراتب المعروف ومراتب المنكر حتى تقدم أهمها عند الازدحام فإن هذا حقيقة العلم بما جاءت به الرسل ابن تيمة says فتفطن be open, open minded to the, what the reality of the religion is لحقيقة الدين the reality and the true essence of this religion وانظر and also observe ما اشتملت عليه الأفعال Look at the actions what it consists of in terms of مصالح benefits and in terms of harm Observe it Look at it So you observe every action What do you observe? المصالح الشرعية والمفاسد you observe the benefits that will come and you, also, and you also what? You also observe the harm. Ibn Taymiyyah goes on to say بِحَيْثُ To the extent that you will come to know تَعْرِفُ مَا مَرَاتِبُ الْمَعْرُوفِ That you will come to know the levels of good. Because the, the, the things that are masalih, the ma'roof, the good are not one level. It's many levels. So you're observing this action and what it consists of in terms of benefits and harms that you are actually coming to know the levels of good there is. وَمَرَاتِبُ munkar, And the levels of evil there is. Why? Why do you need that? حَتَّى تُقَدِّمَ أَهَمَّهَا عِنْدَ الْإِزْدِحَامِ So when they start to uh, overcrowd one another or they start to shadow one another or they start to occur in one moment, you know which one to give precedence to the, over the other. Ibn Taymiyyah says, فَإِنَّ هَذَا حَقِيقَةُ الْعِلْمِ بِمَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ الرُّسُلِ Because that is the true knowledge in which the messengers came with. They came to what? To teach the people maratib al-ma'roof, the levels of good, maratib al-munkar, and the levels of what? evil that when it happens al izdiham that you are able to what to qaddimu ahamaha the one that's most important the one that needs to be put forth and the one that needs to be given precedence to you are able to give precedence to it and that he says fa inna hadha haqiqatul ilmi bima ja'at bihi ar-rusul prophets came to make sure that that takes place he goes on to say it again fa inna tamyiza this is, a not, this, is a, this is a very powerful point. Ibn Taymiyyah then says, 
فإن التمييز بين جنس المعروف وجنس المنكر because distinguishing the good from the evil Are you with me to distinguish the good from the evil أو جنس الدليل وغير الدليل أو to distinguish between what is an evidence and what is not an evidence يتيسر كثيرا that's easy for everybody everyone can do that it is easy for everyone I mean, it's easy for ev uh, nearly everybody it's easy for a lot, of, a lot of people to say to you this is an evidence and say to you this is not an ayah in the Quran where did you bring this from oh, this, is not, this is a hadith there's no such thing as a hadith like that where did you get this from because the hadith that's something that many people can and also what is good and what is bad many people can tell you that oh this is not good for me Oh, this is bad for me. You ask a person who's drinking alcohol or you ask a person who's smoking, and you say to them, smoking, is it good for you or is it bad for you? Do you have to go out of your way to prove it for them? He would know. He knows that if it's good or bad for him. He'll say to you, it's not good for me. He then distinguishing the good from the bad and distinguishing from what is an evidence and what is not an evidence, then that's something the majority and the overwhelming majority know. But what is that which they don't know? But knowing the levels of good and knowing the levels of evil and knowing the levels of evidence Pay attention As we said Knowing what is good from bad and no what's an evidence from what is not an evidence is something that what? Everyone knows that. But knowing, but knowing the levels of good. That the ma'roof which is qasira is not the same as the ma'roof which is muta'addiya. That the good that's it's, it's inclusive, it's only you, it revolves around you, is not equal to the good that involves others. That's why Imam Ahmed rahimahullah was asked, رجل يصلي ويصوم A man prays, he fasts, meaning he comes with righteous deeds. Is he better than one who goes out and refutes and exposes the people of innovation? And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, what did he respond by saying? The one who goes out and exposes the innovators is better than the one who what? Who fasts, who prays. Why did he say that for? Ibn Imam Ibn Taymiyyah responding by saying that because this is the fasting, the praying, the righteous deeds that you're doing is exclusive to you. You're the one that's benefiting from it. As for exposing the innovators, you are benefiting the ummah. You're telling the people what good path they need to take and the harmful path which they need to stay away from. So which of those two, Imam, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, give presidents to. Now if you look at the people today, they'll say to you, why don't you just read Quran and just fast and just do that? Thinking that, thinking what? Thinking that, uh, that the ibadah, the ta'ah, which is qasira, is, is better than the ibadah, which is muta'adiyya. Why would, why did they fall short on that matter? Because they lack maratib al-ma'roof wal-munkar. Knowing the levels of good, and the levels of harm, they lack that. وَمَرَاتِبُ الدَّلِيلِ And also knowing the levels of evidences. Is it the same, the hadith which is ahad, and the hadith which is mutawatir? Are they the same? If they do, if they oppose one another? لا. Is the عام and the khas, the mutlaq and the muqayyad, the mujmal and the mubayyad? These are maratibu الدليل, the levels of evidences. You're using, an, you're using a general evidence. I'm using a specific evidence. Who's given precedence? That the one that's specific is given more precedence to that which is general. Are you with me? Does that make sense? So maratibu dalil the levels of evidences. So when they come together and you feel like there is a form of contradiction, what do you do? He says, you would be able to give precedence to the a'raful ma'rufain, the best of, of them all. Because you know the level. And you will also be able to reject and dismiss المنكرين, the, the evilest 
and the most evilest of harms there is. وَيُرَجِّحُ And you'll also be able to give tarjih, strengthen, aqwad dalilain in the strongest of the two evidences. And then look what he said after that. فَإِنَّهُ خَاصَّةُ الْعُلَمَاءِ بِهَادِ الدِّينِ this is specific to the ulama of this religion. They're the ones who know maratibu al-dalil and maratibu al-ma'roof and maratibu al-munkar. And they're the ones who know aqwa al-dalilayni. Are you with me, brothers? That is maqasid al-shari'ah. And if a person doesn't have a tafattun, as his Shaykh al-Islam Taymi says, he doesn't have an insight of that and he doesn't really understand it, he falls into what we said is al-ghulu, extremism. An exaggeration, an extreme in negligence. And now you find, well, it's the sad reality that we're living in. You find people who have never studied, uh, who have never studied, no book in Usul al Fiqh, and no book in Qawa'id al Faqiyah, and don't know Maqasid al Sharia. And that's why they come out with Fatawa Shadda, Ma'zal Allah biha min Sultan, Fatawa verdicts which are strange that we never find any proof for it. The reality of the matter is, is that it's not even أعرف المعروفين Are you with me? That the best of the two goods, that the person is doing a mistake in. We find them not being able to distinguish between what is معروف and what is munkar. What is a masalih shar'iyya and what is a mafsada. The person who praises, for example, the Arab Spring and says that this is a Masalih Sharia is even lacking the first one which the majority of the overwhelming majority of people understand. As we always say, It is not the eyes that become blind, brothers. It is the person's heart. You become blind from your heart that you won't even see the good from the bad. لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا that the person will be able to see the good that's right in front of him and he will also, and he will also not be able to what? to see the evil that is in front of him he can't even reject and dismiss the evil because what's happened to him is that the matters have come they have tumbled on him and he has fallen uh, what do you call it? Uh, head, head down Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, وَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ فِتْنَتَهُ فَلَنْ تَمْلِكَ لَهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُطَاهِرَ قُلُوبَهُمْ لَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزْيٌ وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah tells us in the ayah, anyone who Allah wants to trial, Allah wants to cause them trials and tribulations, Allah says to the Prophet, you are not able to what? You're not able to help them. A person who Allah doesn't want to purify his heart, you, Muhammad, cannot do anything for them. For verily, those people, those are people who Allah didn't want to purify their hearts. In this world, they live in humiliation. And the day of judgment, they have a severe punishment that awaits them. Allah also says to the Prophet, And Allah also says, Allah says to the Prophet, Be patient, O Muhammad. Be patient with who? Stick and be patient with those who call unto their Lord day and morning, afternoon, every moment of their life. They're just connected to Allah. Wa ta'ala. They are supplicating to their Lord. They are crying to their Lord. They are connected with their Lord. يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ They only want Allah to be pleased with them. Their relationship is with Allah, not politics, siyasat and the likes of it. It is Allah. Allah says, وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُ Don't turn your eyes away from those people. تُرِيدُ زِيرَةِ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا You're looking for the glamours and the glitters of this world. You're looking for politics and siyas and stuff like that. لَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزْءَ Allah says, وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُ تُرِيدُ زِيرَةِ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا do not obey. Man qalbahu, those who have placed locks on their hearts. Man qalbahu an dhikrina, from our remembrance, Allah has placed locks on locks on their hearts. Wa and he follows his desires. Whatever his nafs shows to him is what he follows. Allah says to the Prophet, 
ولا تعد عيناك عن تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطعم الأغفل قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا and his matters are dis they are all over the place they're not organized for him why because he's a person of desires he's a person who Allah humiliated in this world how is Allah humiliated look at the man واتل عليه ابن ما الذي آتيناه آياتنا فانسلق منها فأتبعه الشيطان فكان من الغاوين ولو شئنا لا رفعناه بها ولكنه أخلد إلى الأرض واتبعه واتبع هواه الله سيس فمثله كمثل الكلب إن تحمل عليه يلهد أو تتركه يلهد ذلك مثل القوم الذين كذبوا بآيات الله فقصص القصص لعلهم الله بيجز إن إس آية دات The person who follows this man was a scholar, a man of knowledge but he followed his desires he turned away from the book of Allah he turned away from the religion that was given to him the knowledge he had he turned away from it and he followed his desires so what did Allah تبارك وتعالى compare him to? Allah says he is like a dog in the worst state that the dog is. Not just a dog, but when the dog's tongue is out, saliva is coming. Not many people like people don't like getting close to him like that. That's the living example of a person who has gained knowledge, who has understood the religion, who has then given precedence to their desires over the revelation. That their example is the example of a dog. Now we can't say Allah is disrespectful. We can't say Allah is rude. This is ayatun tutla. This, these are verses that are going to be read until the day of the day of judgment. So you can see Allah tabarak wa ta'ala choosing the harshest example of a person who has knowledge and he follows his own whims and desires. So that person has khizyun fi dunya, humiliation and belittling in this world. We finished the first root cause of extremism. And again, always when we say extremism, I keep repeating this, it is extremism in exaggeration and extremism in negligence. The root cause, the first one was what? Al-jahlu, ignorance of the religion, wa qillatul fahmi bi nususi shari'a, right? And having little understanding of the textual evidence, right? We're now moving on to the second root cause of extremism. And that is, 